When asked about Hunter Biden's business dealings in Ukraine, Yankovic actually ended up connecting the dots pretty well. Let's watch this. The, the accusation is that Hunter Biden, in serving on the board of a Ukrainian company, which you know he is allowed to do, he was not the only foreign expert serving on, on the board of a Ukrainian company, was involved in some corrupt behavior of that company. This company has been investigated for a long time. Burisma is the name of the company. Uh, there's never been any indication that Hunter Biden was involved in anything untoward. Uh, there are questions about whether he should have taken that board appointment, um, given his his father's role as you know the Obama administration's main emissary to Ukraine. But that's not necessarily something that Joe Biden has control over. It certainly has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> with with Joe Biden's policies toward Ukraine. Um, and this has, you know, spun into a whole other host of of nonsense, basically, that Joe Biden withheld aid to Ukraine in order to get a resolution to uh, this investigation into Burisma and get his son out of the limelight. Oh, my God. That's that was really bad. <laughs> First of all, foreign expert? He's not a foreign expert. He has a last name. <laughs> the Biden name. Biden likes to talk about how powerful and, and uh, full of trust and hope that the I, name is. It, it, she was not being nearly as cautious as she needs to be with the language that there was nothing untoward or nothing unethical. There were no problems with it. Of Allegedly, it's, it's maybe. Unethical. I don't. Of course it's untoward. The fact that right. we're talking about it, the fact that the vice president of the United States of America, who has also had this diplomatic relationship with Ukraine, had a son who was not qualified in any capacity to sit on anybody's board, sitting on a board and drawing a significant income for those services, is on its face untoward. Right. What we don't know is the specifics of why. As his father was still significantly happened. involved in the political process. Right. Was going from a vice president to president. Right. Now, I think if there is really no there there, then there should be a more fulsome conversation about what was going on. And I think the more information folks get about that could help people, you know, clear clear up what on its face is not going away because right. it is obviously, it obviously looks like a conflict of interest. Right. And, if, and I'm sorry, if this were a Trump administration official, Democrats would be clawing their eyes out to, to make this a national issue. There would be imp talk of impeachment over this kind of a thing. Yeah, look, I'm open, I guess, to the argument that, that maybe this is more more trivial than Republicans are making it out to be. But we certainly don't know enough to make that determination right. yet. The idea that it's crazy to contemplate that, the, that there is something really troubling here is not something a disinformation czar should be man maintaining. That is itself disinformation. Yeah, As these people always inevitably end up yeah. spreading the very sorts of lies they claim to be policing. Do we know anything about the context of these recordings? Were they meant to be public? I don't know. Well, they didn't look very private. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, on one hand, terrifying to think that these are conversations happening behind closed doors, but also terrifying in a different way in terms of how much hubris is in the room if these are right. the kinds of conversations that are happening, happening publicly, that they don't even understand how this sort of thing would be perceived and how it would undermine the credibility of their project. I was just uh, waiting for her to break into song.